Hi, my name is Terry Doherty. I am the designer of the Glorian Empire series by Lock and Load Publishing. In this video, we'll go over cavalry charges for the Glorian Empire series. So this video is about cavalry charges. We'll do the uh, soldiers game first. Cavalry is one of those uh, complex things in tactical Napoleonic warfare. So many different things can happen. So anytime during a friendly movement phase, the cavalry can uh, move towards a target an enemy opposing stack and can uh, declare a charge. So we'll start off here on the left and the stream here, the dry stream bed costs nothing. So that's one, two, three, four. They move to contact. They will take a <clears throat> reaction fire when they enter. So we'll assume they pass. So they're charging the unit on the end there and we'll go ahead and mark them with the charge marker indicating they're charging. <clears throat> so then that concludes their movement for the, uh, for the friendly movement phase. And then we'll go ahead and move the rest of the units and move to uh, charge. So the next unit is in column, so it'll just move forward and charge the next unit in line. And it's marked with a charge marker, and it takes reaction fire. So we'll just assume they uh, <coughs> are passing the reaction, reaction fire checks for now. And the next one goes in, and it too will take reaction fire from the next skirmish unit in line. Once they're uh, being charged or assaulted, they no longer can uh, perform reaction fire. So <coughs> they only have to take it once, and that means uh, players need to carefully sequence their moves for, for charging and assaults. So the British infantry could attempt to form square, but we'll cover that in a, a later video. So we'll just, just do only cavalry charges for now. So once the phasing player has completed all his movement for all of his units for the turn and the other side has done its reserve movement, then we resolve the cavalry charges. And the cavalry charges can be resolved in any order the phasing player desires. So there are some restrictions on uh, which units can initiate cavalry charges. So an attack order is required in order to initiate a cavalry charge. They have to be in the normal morale state, and they can't have any uh, spent markers, which, in, which indicates that the, the horses are exhausted. And they have to be in column or line formation and in open or light density terrain hexes. So we'll go ahead and resolve the charges, and we'll just start from the, uh, the bottom and move to the top. So the first thing the defender does is roll his um, defender morale check against his morale. So let's assume that they uh, pass. There is a negative modifier for uh, having skirmishers out. So they pass their defender morale check. And like with uh, regular assault, they'll now remove the skirmishers marker. And then they get to conduct defensive fire. So their defensive fire will be 5, plus 2 for well-directed fire, and plus 1 because they're sh shooting at uh, a larger target, which is the horses. So let's assume they get a morale check, and then uh, the cavalry rolls a morale check, and again, it's minus 20 because it's defensive fire and the ranges are close. So if the cavalry fails a morale check, it'll become shaken. So let's go ahead and assume that that happens, and they become shaken and fall back a hex. So they'll fall back a hex in the, in the shaken state, and they'll get two spent markers, and they're done for the turn. So the spent markers are, res are removed during the a friendly rally, segment and one is removed for each turn so there'll be at least two complete rally phases before they can completely recover their horses so for the next charge let's assume that the uh <clears throat> the defenders again pass their morale check their defender morale check and then they remove the skirmishers marker then they conduct reaction fire and so let's assume it's another morale check this time again with the uh, minus 20 and let's assume that this time the french pass so they don't lose two morale levels they go in. So then uh, the next step is cold steel combat, which we conduct just like we do during the assault. So the cavalry will have two for their close combat value mod modifier. The British will have one, uh, but also the, uh, the French will get to add one for, uh, for charging cavalry, but they're in columns, so that'll be minus one. So that'll, that'll even out. Then if you look at cold steel odds, it's one to one, so there's no modifier there. <clears throat> so it's a two versus one for the uh, the final combat value modifiers, which isn't isn't really very good. So you hope to have the uh, the enemy in disorder before uh, before you charge, so that you can get some benefits from that. So let's assume the French win the cold steel combat. So the and they roll the highest die, and but the die rolls are low enough that no casualties are inflicted. So that'll cause the 50th foot here to go from good order to shaken, which will drop them back a hex. 
and then the cavalry will get to advance into the target hex. Actually, they, they must advance. And they'll become disordered before they do so and take reaction fire from them, from the adjacent 50th foot. And then at that point, they can uh, regroup, which means they can move up to three hexes away. And so they'll move through the friendly, behind the, the friendly units here to get some cover. And then they'll be marked with two spent markers, just like the other unit. And they're done for, the, for their charge. <laughs> All right, so let's go to the next one. So the next one is the uh, fourth squadron of the fifth, fifth Dragoons charging the uh, 95th foot, which is in full skirmish mode. So let's assume that they fail their disorder check for defender, defender morale check. And uh, so now they're in disorder. They will fire back with a fire value of three down to two, but plus two more for the, the French cavalry being in column and being cavalry. <clears throat> so let's assume that the French pass their morale check resulting from the fire combat. And now we go to cold steel combat again. So the combat value modifiers would, for the for the uh, British would be minus one for the for the skirmishers, and that's because uh, they are uh, rifle armed, and it's difficult to reload the muskets quickly, so they're at a disadvantage in close combat. And then they're also minus one for disorder. And over here on the charge modifiers chart, they are an additional minus two for being in full skirmish mode, the SED on, on the bottom column there, the bottom row. So their net modifier is going to be minus four. The French will have a modifier of two plus one for charging and minus one for, uh, for being in column. So that's a, a difference of, of, of six on the dice. <laughs> so the French will, will probably win this one. So let's assume they do and and these guys will then uh, drop two morale levels and break. So they'll go back three hexes. And are running away. And the French will get to advance. And then they can either stay there or regroup. It's almost always better to, to regroup, even though you, you take fire when you uh, exit the Zoc of uh, the 50th foot again. So they would go back their three hexes. Let's go back this way. And they get their two spent markers, and they're disordered, which they, they should have disordered before they advanced into the the hex. And the last one is is very similar, uh, where the uh, the fourth dragoons versus the five sixtieth foot in full skirmish mode. And the same same basic modifiers apply, except for this time the uh, the cavalry is in line formation. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do a cavalry on cavalry charge. There's not very much uh, British cavalry in Rolasa and Vimiero. They, they only have one uh, regiment, and there's a handful of uh, Portuguese militia regiments that are of pretty low quality. Okay, so the movement is just like it is for uh, charging infantry, so they'll move up against their uh, intended target hex. They'll put a charge marker on them, indicating they're charging. Then uh, the cavalry could attempt to reaction charge, but we'll cover that in another video. So let's assume they, they fail to reaction charge, so they're just going to stand there and take it. So for cavalry versus cavalry, we go directly to cold steel combat. So the French have a combat value modifier of 2, the British 1. The French will get to add 1 because they're charging, so it'll be a, a 3 to 1 benefit there. And the odds are even because they're both 5 strength points. If the British rolled a 3, it would go to a 4, and if the French rolled a 6, it would go to a 9. So the French would win, with meaning the uh, the 20th Light Dragoons would become shaken and fall back a hex because they dropped two morale levels during close combat. And then the uh, French uh, win it, of course, and they advance into the target hex. They enter disorder when doing so, and then they get their, their two spent markers for the charge. Actually, they can... They, should, they can regroup first and go, go back three hexes before they get their spent markers to kind of get a little bit out of uh, harm's way. Okay, so that's it for the soldiers game. So I should note that uh, when charging in the soldiers game, only one stack can charge one other stack. You, you cannot have multiple charging stacks charging against a single 
defending stack. And that, that's mostly because it's difficult to con control and coordinate during this era, large charges. So in the battalion and brigade game, initiating charges is, is very similar to in the soldiers game with the exception of charge zones. So a charge zone extends four hexes from the front hex sides of a cavalry unit. So you can see here in, in line formation, it extends out four hexes out to the pink hexes. And in column formation, it extends out to the pink hexes here. So just like in the soldier's game, the cavalry moves however it wants during, uh, during the movement phase, expanding MP as normal. And when it gets close to a target, it can uh, declare a charge. So here we could declare a charge at the maximum charge zone distance of four hexes, or we could wait until we get up closer to declare the charge there. And there's different reasons for, for choosing those. So declaring the charge further away gives a benefit for a, an additional charge bonus. They essentially build up momentum before they contact the target. Uh, if they declare closer, then that gives them potentially an opportunity to charge multiple units, and we'll, we'll get to that later. So a, a clear line of sight is required to place a charge marker to a potential target. So we'll go ahead and place a charge marker, and just like in the soldier's game, the uh, brigade commander has to have an attack order. And the charges can be resolved in, in any order, just like in the soldier's game. So let's assume we've completed all our movement, and the British player has completed all of his uh, reserve move movement for the turn, so we'll go ahead and start the charges. So during the charge phase, the first thing we do is uh, charge movement. So he will move to contact and identify that British unit as the target of the charge. It's the only one, so it, it's rather obvious. Um, if they had skirmishers deployed, the cavalry would again undergo reaction fire. So I like to leave the uh, charge marker in the hex where the cavalry charge was declared as a reminder of where it started, so you can more easily count up the uh, charge bonus and also note if there can be any uh, follow-on charges to the end of the, the unit's charge zone. So for resolving the, the charge, it's just like in the soldier's game, so the infantry would take a defender morale check and then they would conduct their defensive fire. And if the cavalry did not become shaken or broken and, and retreat away, then they'll go to cold steel combat and roll up the dice. The change here is that the cavalry will get its combat value modifier and plus three for charging three hexes in, in open terrain. If it charged through light density terrain, it would not get that bonus, or if it charged across a hexide obstacle, it would not get that bonus. And it does not get that bonus when it uh, charges units in square or in MDT hexes. So let's assume that the infantry lost the uh, cold steel combat and became shaken and went back hex. Now at this point, the cavalry will become disordered, advance into the target hex, and then they can... Uh, regroup again and fall back uh, their three hexes, which they'll take reaction fire when they do. And get their two spent markers and it, it's all over for that charge. So an additional change with the battalion and brigade games is that infantry in full skirmish mode can retreat before combat. Uh, also, light cavalry can retreat from battle cavalry and Irregular cavalry can retreat from any other type of cavalry. So irregular cavalry would be Cossacks or maybe uh, Don Julian Sanchez's uh, cavalry later in the, uh, the Peninsular War. So here we'll have the cavalry move forward three hexes and declare a charge. And then we'll assume that all other movement is complete and they'll just go straight to uh, cavalry close combat. So they do their charge movement again, so they'll move forward a hex, and they, they will take reaction fire when they enter the hex, so let's assume they pass. So now the cavalry will declare the skirmishers to be the target of the charge. The skirmishers will exercise their option to retreat before combat. They can retreat into the 50th foot's battalion there, in which case both the 50th foot and the skirmishers would be in disorder or they can retreat through the 50th foot and place the 50th foot between them and the cavalry. So that's what they'll choose to do. So they'll, they'll do that, and then they become uh, disordered. 
So after the skirmishers conclude their retreat, the cavalry can now attempt to recall in either end of the charge, or they can continue forward, or if they fail their recall check, they, can, uh, they will charge the 50th foot. So a recall check is a test against the unit's morale. So if, if they roll greater than 35 with all of their modifiers, which is the morale of the cavalry there, then uh, they'll be able to recall and choose a new target or end the charge. Otherwise, they're required to continue forward. So if they end the charge, then they will go back their three hexes to do regroup up to three hexes and then get their two spent markers and the charge will be finished. But if they continue their charge or fail to recall, then the cavalry will go forward and then they'll go through the uh, charge sequence again. 50th, 50th foot would take their defender morale check and let's assume that they fail. So they are now in disorder. So then uh, they do their defensive fire, and let's assume that the cavalry passes its, any, any morale checks generated from the, uh, the defensive fire. So now we go to Cold Steel Combat, and let's assume that the cavalry wins the Cold Steel Combat again. So the infantry now enters the broken state and will retreat three hexes. And the cavalry enters disorder, and then enters the hex. So at this point, the cavalry will take reaction fire from the disordered skirmishers when they advance into their Zoc. And then the cavalry cannot pursue at this point because it's in an enemy Zoc, so it has to kind of end the charge. So it can regroup at this point and go back three hexes. And it gets its two spent markers as usual, and the charge is finished. Okay, now we'll go over pursuit. So targets that break or rout during a charge can be pursued after the advance after combat step. So the cavalry moves forward as usual, and it'll move forward to there, and then it'll declare a charge. And then we go forward, and everything happens just like before. The 50th foot takes its uh, defender morale check, then it does its defensive fire, and let's assume that it, it failed its defender morale check, so it's in disorder, just like the last charge. And the cavalry passes everything, so it's in it's in good shape. So then uh, we go to Cold Steel Combat and assume that the British lose the Cold Steel Combat again. So then they will break, and they'll go back three hexes. Now the cavalry becomes disordered again before it advances after combat and goes into the hex. So at this point, the cavalry must pursue unless it passes a recall check. If they pass the recall check, it can choose to end the charge. Otherwise, it must pursue. And you don't have to take the recall check. You can choose just to pursue, which in this case, there, there's no other danger, so it's not a bad idea. So they'll go ahead and pursue up to the point where they become adjacent to the target that retreated or they enter a Zoc or they come to terrain that they, they cannot enter in their current formation. So they go two hexes forward if they when they pursue, and that will inflict a step loss on the 50th foot. So they'll flip over to their other side. And then the cavalry can do its regroup from there. So they can go up to three hexes back. So they'll go back to there. They're still in disorder. And then they get their, their two spent markers. If they chose to recall and succeeded, then they would just go back up to three hexes from their, their current position and end the charge and get their two, two spent markers. Okay, now we'll cover follow-on charges. So during, during the period, there are a number of famous charges where cavalry ran through multiple formations and drove them all away. <clears throat> and some examples of that are uh, at Albuera, where uh, Colborne's brigade was charged by the uh, Polish Lancers, where they inflicted grievous losses on, the, on, the, on Colborne's brigade, and Kellerman's charge at Marengo, or Marchant's charge at Salamanca, or the Scots Greys at Waterloo. So here we have a situation where some British, cal British infantry are presenting a flank to some cavalry, and they're in poor morale shape, so they're easy targets for the cavalry. <clears throat> so in this kind of case where you're potentially going to charge multiple targets with the follow-on charge, then you want to get as close as possible. So the cavalry will move right up adjacent to the infantry before it declares its charge. And you can kind of judge how much charge distance you might need to get the, the bonuses. So here we'll go directly to close combat. So the 150th foot takes a defender morale check. Let's assume it fails 
because it's got a number of negatives there for being shaken and getting charged in the flank, etc. So it'll break and then ride away three hexes. So now the cavalry becomes disordered and advances after combat into the hex. And now it either has to pursue or pass a recall check. So let's assume it passes a recall check and now it wants to conduct a follow-on charge against the flank of the other piece of 150th foot there. So to do that, it'll also have to pass a morale check. And if it fails the morale check, it'll become shaken and go back a hex and the charge will be done. If it passes the morale check, then it'll go through the charge process just like it did against the first unit. Okay, so now that unit takes its defender morale check and let's assume it fails. So it'll become shaken and then drop back a hex. So now the cavalry is faced with the same choice again. They advance, they remain in disorder, and they, can, they either, they, they can't pursue, so now they can try a second follow-on charge, and here they would pass a morale check again. So again, if they failed their morale check for the second follow-on charge, then they would drop back a hex and become shaken, and then they'd get two spent markers and the charge would be finished. But if they continue on, then we would go through the whole process again. So now the uh, 50th foot there in their front facing would uh, take another defender morale check. And so if they failed at that point, then they're gonna break and go three hexes. So once again, the cavalry advances, advances into the now vacant uh, target hex. And it's again faced with the same choice. It can either try and pursue the broken 150th B foot, or it can try and charge another follow-on charge against the uh, 150A foot and route them. So let's assume it passes its morale check again, and, or it passes its recall check and also passes uh, another follow-on charge. So at that point, the 50-foot uh, A would become routed because it's already broken. So it's gonna go its three hexes and run away. And now let's assume that the cavalry wants to pursue. So they'll just skip their recall check so they'll advance into the hex, they're still in disorder, and they'll go two hexes and inflict a step loss on that unit. <clears throat> and now they can do their final regroup, go back three hexes, they're already in disorder, and then they'll get their two spent markers and the charge is finished. So you can see that the cavalry charges can be quite devastating when vulnerable units are lined up in a nice row for them. The brigade game adds the concept of wave charges, which was a common technique against infantry. So the first wave would take the brunt of the infantry's fire. Following waves would uh, follow closely on the heels of the preceding waves so that they could hit the infantry before they had a chance to reload their muskets. We'll run through a quick example here. So here we have two cavalry units that are going to conduct a wave charge against the, uh, the British infantry there. They have to be in the same hex or in adjacent hexes in order to conduct a wave charge. So we'll send in the, the first wave so the first wave would take reaction fire when it enters the, the skirmish zone. Then the, the infantry would do their defender morale check as usual. The skirmishers would get removed, and then they'd do defensive fire. And then we'd go to cold steel combat and resolve that, just like a regular charge. So let's assume that the first wave just disordered the British infantry and the cavalry uh, lost the combat and became shaken. And it's done for, the, for that. Now, the first wave or the, excuse me, the second wave would then go in. But of course the skirmishers are no longer there because they've been driven in. So there's no reaction fire from the skirmishers. So normally the infantry would take a defender morale check, but they've already taken one and not been forced to retreat. So they're assumed to stay in place and we go directly to cold steel combat. There's no defensive fire because the infantry now has empty muskets and they're just trying to hang on against the, the cavalry sabers. And from here on out for the last wave of the charge, it's just like any other cavalry charge with the options to pursue or recall as needed. So that's it for charges. I hope you enjoyed this video.